About a month ago, a company called Lightbook announced that they were going to be releasing a laptop that runs elementary OS. I read a little bit about their laptop, thought it sounded awesome, so I bought one. It arrived yesterday in this neat little box, and as you can see, it looks pretty much exactly as it did in the pictures on their website. The contents of the box were pretty spartan, it was just a laptop and a charger. No documentation or a case or anything. I found the design and the overall aesthetic of the Lightbook to be quite good. It's just a simple white laptop with the stylized Alpha logo on the top. There are no real ports on the right side, two lights on the front, and only a small handful of ports on the left side which actually include an Ethernet port. I thought that was kind of odd. There's also a micro SD card slot on the side and it looks like one on the back. If you wanted to take this thing apart it actually looks really, really simple. There's one big port on the back, which is where I assume the hard drive lives, and there's two speakers on the side here. Opening it up and looking at the keyboard, the power button looks a little out of place. It's like this fake chrome, and then the rest of the keys are just white. The function keys have blue accents on them, which I think look really nice. And the keyboard itself is a pretty standard chiclet style keyboard. And unfortunately there is a Windows key. It's a shame that there's not at least a sticker on that thing. The touchpad is meh. Though I've never seen a laptop of this size or style that has a better than average touchpad, so it's not really that big of a deal. So since we looked at the Lightbook's hardware, let's look at an actual Chromebook. Now this is my daughter's Chromebook that she gets from school, and I don't really know how old it is or a whole lot about it. But the Lightbook is kind of billed as an alternative to common Chromebooks. So I think this Chromebook is like a 10 or something inch screen, so it's quite a bit smaller and clearly she was using it for school related stuff. So I assume that a Chromebook like this Lenovo one is something like $200 or so, and this Lightbook was about $250. So kind of gives you an idea of the price point we're looking at here. So let's take a look at the first boot and initial setup of the Lightbook. Now the Lightbook only has a micro HDMI slot and I don't have a converter, so I wasn't able to use my screen capture device. But the initial setup is just like installing elementary. So if you've installed elementary, it's pretty much the same thing. You set your region and locale and you set up your user account and then log into whatever wireless you have and that's pretty much it. Once the initial setup is done, it will just take you to the login screen. It won't even have to reboot, which is kind of weird. Once I logged in after that initial setup, I noticed that I didn't have a wireless connection. I tried disabling and re-enabling the adapter, but that didn't seem to work, so I went ahead and rebooted the Lightbook and it worked just fine after that. At this point in the video, I'm rebooting and I'm not going to edit this at all. So it's worth pointing out that I opted for the hybrid SSD model. So it's going to boot really, really fast, which is really awesome. The BIOS Fender is a company called Inside. And from what people are saying on Reddit, it's a really good BIOS. I don't know anything about it, but apparently it's good. So now that we're back in the OS, I'm just going to go ahead and run through the default installed applications with the camera pointing at the screen, and then I'm going to uninstall some of those, install OBS, and then we'll go to screen capture. So let's do it. So for accessories, everything is pretty default elementary except for files, and we'll get to that in a moment. In the games folder, we have Play on Linux. In graphics, we have GIMP, which I don't think is a default install. Now they replaced the default web browser, which I think was Epiphany, it might have been Midori, they replaced it with Firefox. I'm kind of ambivalent on this change because I don't use either of those. Now in Office they have something called desktop editors. I'm pretty sure they said that they were going to install something else, but again I don't really care because I don't use Office software. Under other we have Notepad, which is a Wine application, so Wine comes installed. Sound and video is all default elementary apps. And system tools are the same. And of course we have Wine. So if we do GLX info, we'll see that all of the display and OpenGL stuff is installed and correctly configured. We're running an HD 400 Braswell. We got Mesa 12, and it looks like the OpenGL version is 4.3, which is pretty good. I think it's standard Ubuntu 16.4. Now one of the biggest changes that Lightbook made to stock elementary is they replaced the elementary files application with Nautilus. Now this is actually a change I disagree with because I actually like the elementary OS file browser. I mean Nautilus is fine and you could argue that it's more powerful and full featured, but it doesn't match the overall elementary UX design. I mean if you look at the header bar it just looks like squished and weird. Alright now I'm going to install some of the applications that I like to use, I'm going to uninstall the default applications that I don't like to use, and we're going to switch to OBS and get rid of this crappy camera, so let's do that. So here we are back in the Lightbook. We got OBS going. 
So I wanted to see what gaming on the Lightbook was like. So we're gonna be looking at Counter-Strike, Broforce, Cluster Truck. I tried Delver, but the game won't even launch. It just crashes as soon as you press play. At this stage, it's really worth pointing out that this processor, even though it's quad core or dual core with hyper threading or whatever it is, it's really, really weak. It can barely run all of this at 1080p, let alone while trying to capture the screen. So for the rest of this video in OBS, it's not quite as bad as it looks here, and this is actually exactly why I prefer an external screen capture device, but it is still quite slow even without OBS running. So one of the things that is advertised as part of the Lightbook promotion is that it's good or at least okay for light gaming. So this is Broforce, and I would consider Broforce uh, light gaming. I mean, it's a, it's a bit more intense than you would expect because there's so much going on, but yeah, when I was playing this without OBS, I was getting about five frames a second. So honestly, this one frame per second is pretty accurate. So this is Cluster Truck, and I decreased the screen resolution to try to squeeze a bit more performance out of it. And it worked when OBS wasn't running, but when I started recording, it, it just became really choppy and totally unplayable. Not that it was really playable before OBS was running, but I think you get my point. So this is Counter-Strike, and I think by this point you kind of get the idea. Counter-Strike actually ran at about 10 frames a second before OBS was running, and I managed to get through about two matches, which is why I have an AK here. But once I turned OBS on, again, it just completely dumped out, and like I said before, the screen capture is making this look a lot worse than it actually is. I mean, if you could deal with a low frame rate, which I don't think most people could, you could probably get away with playing this offline with bots or something, but this, I mean... You're not even getting 15 frames a second, let alone 30, which is what most people require to play CSGO. So that's gonna just about wrap up this video. Now I'm not totally done because I wanna talk about some of the things that the Linux community in general has said about the Lightbook prior to its actual delivery. Even though the Reddit threads where the Lightbook company was announcing their product got a lot of upvotes, it seemed like the majority of the comments, and especially the best comments, was mostly just criticism and people trying to call out the company as a scam. There was an article by Itz Foss that really drummed up these fears of the company and the product being a total scam. It seemed like folks in the Linux community went out of their way to dig up information that sort of proved that this whole thing was a scam. People seemed proud of themselves because they found images of the laptop on a Chinese site, pointing out that the laptop itself is merely a bulk order of cheap laptop from Chinese retail Alibaba. The funny thing is that most laptops are manufactured in China. So to point out the Lightbook is a bulk order of cheap laptops from China is just stupid. If you're going to be buying a computer, let alone a laptop, from a small boutique retailer, which is basically what Lightbook is, you're probably going to be getting a respin of a laptop in another country. Another comment on Reddit tore apart the website, which the website could be improved. As we saw from the gaming footage in this video, I would actually recommend to take off all references from gaming from the site entirely. Just promote the laptop as a Chromebook replacement. People don't buy Chromebooks to sit around and game on. I could keep going on about this, but I'm going to go ahead and stop here. To summarize, I think that it's bullshit that the Linux community immediately jumped out and called this whole thing a scam. Clearly, it's not a scam, and it's completely unfair to not only Lightbook, but all of the other potential startups that want to do something like this. You want to release a product to a community, and the community turns around and throws shit at you and calls you a scam. What kind of community is that? So I hope that you liked it. My personal recommendation is that the Lightbook is a fantastic freaking value. Just don't plan on doing any sort of gaming on it. And that's all I have. If you liked the video and you liked other stuff on my channel, feel free to like this video, like other stuff on my channel, and subscribe. Thanks a ton for watching.